A good Sunday morning to you. This is Pastor Jones here at Valley Assembly of God here in Hagerstown, Maryland, welcoming you to our Sunday morning uh, service and uh, praying that once again that God's going to touch your life and challenge you this morning by the Word of God. Uh, can I just say to you, it is a privilege to come into your homes. Um, it's a joy. There's so many today that are without a church, can't go to church. And uh, it is our desire to uh, fill the gap and to meet a need and uh, somehow, some way, be a blessing to you. Let me just remind you of our services. Sunday is it's Bible study, Sunday school at 9 o'clock for all ages, 10 o'clock morning worship. We're back here Sunday night, 6 o'clock with Royal Rangers and Girls Ministries going on as well. Monday prayer meeting, 12 noon in the sanctuary here. And then Wednesday night, our Oasis service. Uh, where we have an in-depth Bible study after a wonderful time of praise and worship. Our youth group meets, children's uh, ministries are going on, as well as uh, Sunday mornings during morning worship, children's ministries are going on as well. And uh, we hope that you come and get back in the house of God again and enjoy the good things of God. If you have your Bibles there with you this morning, take them in hand, if you would, to the book of Romans, the 14th chapter, please. The book of Romans, <clears throat> you remember last week I told you that we were starting a series here on Sunday morning about road signs, road signs that speak volumes to our spiritual road that we're on, heading to glory, heading into eternity, and I hope that every one of these messages are going to challenge and stir you. Romans 14 and 7, the Bible says, none of us live to him Self. For a few moments this morning, I want to talk about a road sign you see every so often going down the highway. The man, <clears throat> the man behind you can't read your mind. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to break the bread of life for these dear people. I pray, God, let your word come alive. May you challenge us. May you convict us. God, may you do the needed work within us, Lord. And help us to recognize the enormity of our influence on other people. Father, bless your word and your, and your preacher now, we pray. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Highway signs. They are powerful and practical preachers, folks. They get to the root of the matter very quickly. And here is one of their timely sermons for us this morning. The man behind can't read your mind. This is a sign which you will see now and then as you roll down the highway. It reminds you and I that you are not the only man on the road. There are others on the road nearby you. They're behind you. They're at your side. You can be hindered. You can be hurt. You can be injured, even destroyed, listen, by the way you drive. You can affect other people that surround you on this highway. Some years ago, a preacher went to visit a friend in the hospital in Denver. He had been a distinguished missionary to China. And he was on furlough and with another elder from the church he was going to be preaching at. They were driving uh, down the road. When, when without any signal, without any warning, a car in front of him suddenly turned out. In the collision which ensued, this missionary had been badly injured, spent weeks and weeks and weeks in the hospital. And even after six years now that it passed, he, still, he, is, he is still not fully recovered. My friends... We are someone that can influence others around about us if we're not careful in a negative way. I remember years ago myself, I was training in karate and uh, we would stripe out our uniforms in black when you got a black belt and I did get my black belt. And I had to go uh, to the Pontiac Mall and buy that material. But on the way back, somebody pulled right out in front of me smashed my car up and unexpected but how that 
influenced me and hindered me and hurt me at that moment in time, not physically, but the inconvenience of getting the car fixed and needing the car to go to school and what have you. Listen, people can influence and turn the direction of your life in literally a blink. My friends, what was the trouble? How did this accident happen, both for myself and this missionary? The man in front turned out without letting the man behind know what was going, what he was going to do. And since the man behind could not read his mind, the wreck took place. It happens every single day in the real physical world, but I want you to know it happens every day in the spiritual world as well. The first thing that I want to point out to you this morning is this. Nobody lives to themselves. Let that sink in for just a moment. In this great text, none of us live it to himself. Paul speaks of our enormous responsibility for our conduct and our influence upon other people's lives. The particular matter that he had in mind was eating meat, which had been offered at the altar in one of the pagan temples. This affected Paul. It impacted Paul. And he said if eating such meat would be an offense and a stumbling block to his brother Christian, Paul said he would not eat no meat while the world standeth. He is keenly sensitive. Listen now. Keenly sensitive to his influence upon other men and will take care that the influence which goes out from him shall be such as will bless and not hurt somebody else. Listen, others' eternal state may depend on how you and I live. You see, there is both a conscious an unconscious influence for good and for evil. It is true that there are those who deliberately seek to lead others astray. We see it every day in the news. Satan, my friends, who fell from heaven, desires to see others fall as well. That is the secret of his constant assault upon the souls of men. He is relentless. There are sinners who seek to entice others to sin and the warning of the book of Proverbs, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. My friends, that is a timely warning. It is a warning that we need to get through to our teenagers especially. But much of the influence which we exert in life, it's unconscious, which brings me to the second point. There is an unconscious influence for evil that we see in society every day. A pastor of a particular church years ago by the name of Dr. William Paxton once declined to receive a request for membership in his church by a young man because he engaged in the liquor business. The young man who came from a brewer's family in New York and had never thought of his business as anything but a respectable uh, uh, business, took great offense at that preacher. You know what? When a preacher stands his ground for right, sometimes people, un un unfortunately, get offended. What this preacher did was right. The man was offended when Dr. Paxton informed him that he could not receive him as a member. So in great anger, he told Dr. Paxton as he left the office, he would not have anything to do with this or any other church. But as he was leaving, Dr. Paxton said to him, and this is going to date the story, he said, I would advise you to follow your wagons around the city and see where they go and the influence that they exert. He never expected to see the young man again, but some months later, he came again to the office. The young man apologized for his rudeness of speech on the former occasion and told Dr. Paxton that he had took his advice and had followed the wagons all over the city. 
He then separated himself from that business entirely, and now he wished to come back to the church and ultimately be a member. My friends, that man learned that what he was involved with, unbeknownst to him, was not blessing lives, but damning them. Well, we need to understand that today as well. Driving at night through an unknown territory, you often follow the taillights of a car in front of you. It may be foggy, it may be rainy. Although the man in the car in front of you doesn't know it, he's acting as a guide and a pacemaker for you. If he takes the wrong turn or goes off the road, you follow him. And so it is in life. Listen to me. There's a man behind you that's following us and who is being guided in the right or the wrong way by you and I. Please, don't tell me the choices you make doesn't have impact on those about you. It does every day. Some years ago, there was a very popular book. I remember reading it in college. For Whom the Bell Tolls. The title was taken from the 17th century devotion of an English preacher and poet by the name of John Donne. His idea in that passage was exactly that of the Apostle Paul, that none of us liveth to himself. That if a fragment of soil is washed away from the continent, the whole continent is affected thereby. And when the bell of death tolls, it tolls for us all. John Donne, in his later years, when he was a powerful preacher of the gospel, is said to have expressed deep regret and sorrow in his years before he became a Christian at some of the things he had written, which he calculated sowed the seeds of licentiousness and immorality in the lives of other people. John Newton, author of some of the best loved and best sung hymns in the hymn book, was he himself a profane and wicked sailor at sea. He let his young shipmate in the wrong path. When later he was converted and came to Christ, John Newton made an earnest effort, but ineffectively attempting to reclaim the youth which he had led astray. What greater and keener pain of remorse could there be than the consciousness that you have influenced a mortal soul in the wrong direction? I know when I got saved, I went down the street to a young man that was a year or two younger than me that I know that I had influenced in the wrong direction. And he was standing on a ladder working on his father's house and I was talking to him about the Lord and getting saved and coming to God and I, I made a, an earnest plea to try to bring him along the path that now I was walking. And he said to me, that's all well and fine for you, but he said, I've got some living to do yet. I'm not ready to commit my life to God. It wasn't but a few weeks later he was horribly taken out into eternity by a horrible car accident. My heart is broken to this day. Friends, we are influencing people for good or we are influencing them for evil. My friends, in the Christian life and in the church, if you are faithful and regular and consistent and prayerful, others are going to be helped by you. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. A well-known judge who had long deferred decision at length waited upon the minister of the church and told him he desired to confess his faith and unite himself with that church he had been in for years. The minister asked him if there was any particular sermon that finally touched his heart and, and influenced him in, in making this decision. No, said the judge. It was the life of a member of the church who lives next door to me that brought me to this decision. Let me ask you something. Are you helping or hindering somebody from completely committing themselves to God? By your decision not to be a member of God's church, are you influencing others not to join themselves to the church? 
Because if there's ever been a day where God's people need to be not only a member of the church, but stand up and count for God, it's today. And may we influence others to do that as well. On the other hand, an inconsistent, faithless life on the part of a Christian man may keep another out of the church. It ought not to be so, but for we follow Christ and we confess our faith in him and not in another. Nevertheless, an unworthy life on the part of a church member will sometimes keep another one out. And not only an unworthy life, but a neglect on the part of one man to confess his faith in Christ and to come into the church may set a wrong example for somebody else. Amos Kendall, famous postmaster of the United States, founder of the Pony Express when he was 70 years of age, stood up in church in Washington one day and said, I have a confession of faith that I need to make. The startled congregation thought he was going to confess some fraud or some transgression. But what they heard him say was that he thought he could be a good moral man without confessing his faith and becoming a member of God's church. But he had recently learned of a man who had followed his example and had said to himself that if it wasn't necessary for Mr. Kendall to unite with the church, it was not necessary for him to do it either. The man being weaker than Kendall later fell into sin and died, died a wretched death. Kendall's conscience smote him because of this, and he said he recalled at least 12 men who might have been Christians had he been a better example of Christ. Friends, when judgment was pronounced upon the man in the Garden of Eden in the book of Genesis, God said to Adam, Cursed be the ground for thy sake. Here at the very fountain of the stream of history, when man is judged and punished for his disobedience, he is told that the ground is cursed for his sake because of what he had done. Because of his disobedience, the ground was cursed. Thorns also when thistles shall thou bring forth to thee. You and I, listen, still feel the effects of that first man's transgression. Which brings me to my last point this morning. There is also the unconscious, thank God, influence for good. If there are those for whose sake the ground of life is cursed, thank God there are those from whom, for their sake, became an example of being a blessing. You see, we're either a curse or a blessing. There's no in-between ground. Here's an influence which cannot be checked or held back any more than you can bind the sweet influence of a mountain range that captures your vision. In the Acts of the Apostles, we read about Peter who was healing the sick. Those who were unable to get near him because of the press of the crowd were laid by their friends along the street so that when Peter passed by, the shadow might touch them. And at the time the shadow touched them, that they might be healed. Figuratively speaking, now listen to me, this is so important. This is always true in life. There's a shadow, there's an influence which falls from us noiselessly, but inevitably and irrevocably as the shadow of a tree. Friends, it's producing good or it's producing evil. The poet said, this learned I from the shadow of the tree, which to and fro did play upon the garden wall. Our shadow selves our influence may fall where we ourselves may never be. You never know who you're influencing. Remember, think of the man behind you. 
in front of you, alongside of you in life. Search your heart this morning. Search it. Follow the trail of yesterday, of last week, of last year. Where would it have led anyone astray? Where would it have weakened another's faith? Where would it have kept another man from coming to Christ? If there's anything in your life, in your soul today, that might hurt or blight another's soul, that might, by the help of God, may we put it away. May we renounce it. May it be done with starting now. Because I can't and you can't afford to lead somebody down the wrong path when God has called us to lead them to the Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, when you, when you renounce those things, when you embrace the Lord Jesus Christ, when you're in fellowship with the Lord, your influence that will flow from your life will always be one for another's good. And that's what the Christian life is all about. May God help us to do that this morning without hesitation. Remember, my friends, the man behind you can't read your mind. But he does see and will see and will be blessed or cursed by everything you and I do and say. May God help you and I to be that blessing. Bow your heads with me, please. Heavenly Father, thank you now for the precious word of God. If there's anyone under the sound of my voice today that's not living right, may they renounce their sin, may they run to Jesus, may they be cleansed in the blood, and may they live after you from this day forward. God, may every one of us as believers be conscious of our influence, and God, may every day we do that which is good and positive and helpful to everybody about us, we pray, as we reflect the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Father, protect and keep us through this week ahead, and God, help us to keep our eyes upon you and be the influence you've called us to be. We thank you for it. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for gathering with us today. I pray I challenge you today. May we go out and be that positive influence that God has called us to be, and I will see you soon. God bless you.